In this video, we're going to learn how to conduct hypothesis test for a population mean using the p-value approach. We're already familiar with hypothesis structures, so I'm not going to go into much detail explaining them again. I will only point out the main differences. Since we're working with population mean, of course, it explains why we're using mu in describing the null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis, right? The structures are the same. And then the main difference in the whole process is that hypothesis testing for a population mean is based on the student's t distribution instead of the normal distribution. And that's due to the fact that the sample means follow that distribution. We know that the sampling distribution of the sample mean under certain condition follows student's t distribution. So let's look at an example. According to Fair Isaac Corporation, the mean FICO score is 703.5. A credit analyst wondered whether the high-income individuals, incomes in excess of $100,000 per year, had higher credit scores. He obtained a random sample of 40 high-income individuals and found the sample mean credit score to be 714.2, with a standard deviation of 83.2. Conduct the appropriate test to determine if high-income individuals have higher FICO score at alpha equals 0 0.05 level of significance. Let's look at the steps that we need to take to conduct the hypothesis testing. So first we need to verify conditions. There are two conditions here. First that the sample has to be obtained by simple random sampling or the data result from a randomized experiment. Let's see if we can find that information in the description. Let's see. Okay, right here. He obtained a random sample, right, of 40 high-income individuals. So yes, that condition satisfied. And the second one is that the sample has no outliers and the population from which the sample is drawn is normally distributed. Um, or the sample size is large, with sample size being greater than or equal to 30. So we're kind of given options here and the one that the works for us is that our sample is considered to be large. It contains more than 30 individuals, right? So the second condition is also satisfied. That means that we can move on with the steps. And in the first step, we're going to determine the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. So in other words, we need to know the hypothesis structure. And that's something that we'll need to put in the calculator. The null hypothesis is always the one that gives the specific value of the parameter. Well, parameter we're working with here is population proportion. Remember, it's mu. And what population proportion are we given? Well, that's the first sentence. According to Fair Isaac Corporation, the mean FICO score is 703.5. That's the given population mean. So 703.5. The alternate or alternative hypothesis H1 states that the value of the population mean is different from the value that was spec specified here in the null hypothesis. However, we have to tell how different, if it's simply different or if it's greater or less. So let's look for the keywords. Um, let's read the question. See how it says conduct the appropriate test to determine if high income individuals have higher FICO score. Higher. This is what the alternative hy hypothesis states or claims that the population proportion is higher or greater than the one that we have in the null hypothesis. So when using the greatest sign, we're dealing with the right tail hypothesis structure. And that's something that we'll need to know when we use calculator. So in this example, I will only show calculator steps, but there are also steps that it can be done by hand using the formulas. So to compute p-value using calculator, you're going to press stat, then you move to tests, and 
in among the tests, you have to choose the number two, t-test. Now in the first line here, we have to choose in which form we're going to enter sample data into the calculator. So one way is to simply enter the sample itself, all the values provided with the sample, which we don't have actually, right? But we have another option that's called stats. So you can enter statistics um, description of the sample. And that we have because what, what do we have here? We have sample mean, right? We're given sample mean and standard deviation. So we have sample statistics. And for this reason, we're going to use this, this option, stats. So I'm going to switch to stats, press enter to highlight it. And as soon as I highlighted stats, the screen's changed a little bit. And um, right here, that's where I will enter statistics. So X bar represents sample mean and an S right here. It represents sample standard deviation. But before that, we need to enter mu sub zero. Well, that is the value. Actually, I already have it here, right? That is population mean stated in the null hypothesis, 703.5. So make sure you enter that, 703.5. Next, sample standard deviation, 714.2. Sample standard deviation right here, 83.2. Next, calculator is asking for n. n is the sample size. What is the sample size? Oh, right here. Sample size is 40 high income individuals, right? So sample size is 40. And then finally, we have to enter the hypothesis structure. So the way we read it, there are three options, mu, the first option is not equal to mu not, less than mu not, or greater than mu not. So you will be able to recognize which one you need to choose if you look at the alternative hypothesis. We have alternative hypothesis with a greater sign, right? Since we're testing whether the FICO score is higher for those high income individuals, right? So higher was interpreted as greater sign. So I will have to highlight greater than sign, press enter to choose that option. And next I will go down and highlight calculate and then press enter. And that's where I'll get the p-values. So p-value is stated here in line number three, see how it says p equals. So that's the p-value, I'm gonna write it down. So here's the p-value and the calculator steps that we took to find it. Now, what is the meaning of the p-value? The p-value represents probability of how likely it is to obtain a sample with a given description, the following sample mean and the following stand sample standard deviation, and the population described in the null hypothesis. And as we can see that probability is 21%. So it is likely that that sample in which we only had um, high income individuals. So it is likely that those high income individuals come from the population with the average or mean FICO score of 703.5 points. So in other words, there is nothing unusual that that sample had a little bit higher FICO score. Now let's take the official steps of interpreting the result. So we have to decide whether we reject or not reject the null hypothesis. And that's where we use the found p-value, 0.21 p-value. And we compare it with the given level of significance, which is 0 0.05. That's alpha, level of significance. What sign do we use between those two values? Well, it's going to be greater sign. So we can see that p-value is greater than the level of significance. And when that happens, we don't reject the null hypothesis. So Therefore, do not reject the null hypothesis. In other words, we did not find sufficient evidence to support the claim that higher income 
individuals have higher FICO score. And here that conclusion.